how this is when the family experienced a sensation. They all described experiencing the same thing, that they felt that the car was actually being physically lifted off the highway. Like the car was being lifted up. I I assume it's like when you, when you kind of go over one of those, you go over a hill a little bit that, that, you know, you kind of go up, feel your stomach. Yeah. Your stomach kind of drops. I mean, not a very big bump at 200 kilometers an hour would probably give you that sensation. <laughs> well, the other thing is, too, is like, because I, th- I thought about that if when I used to have a when I was reckless when I was younger and you're driving that fast, sometimes with your suspension, you kind of get that like that feeling when you're driving that fast, like especially when you're driving a fucking 96 Astro van with no shocks, like you get this like really like like you're almost flying above the above the road. But so I kind of thought it was that except they all described being dropped right after. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the sensation only lasted for a, like a brief moment. And then the, they said the car felt like it was suddenly just dropped uh, to the ground. And either during, like when they were being pulled up or right after they were dropped, they said that they reported also uh, some type of strange smell and uh, some type of gr- like a gray smoke or a thick mist actually filling the car. Oh my god. And this is the mist. Yeah, which all of this actually preceded what is one of the 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 events that is mostly described as the, probably the strangest is that they all recall like their voices in the car cuz I'm sure they're all screaming at each other at this point. Um all their voices seem to they describe them slowing down or sounding low pitched. Whoa, man. A bunch of <laughs> 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 fucking dart in your neck. Crikey. Rise of Blight. Yeah. Uh it's one of the descriptions of one of the one of the sons said he said it's not though the voices were coming out of us like deep and slow it's almost like when you talk your voice slowed from leaving your like after leaving your mouth like the sound just like like but it wasn't them talking slow like he's like it was he's like i don't know how to explain it it's interesting because remember like i don't know we probably talked about it but like how they feel like being dropped after right yeah after the sensation it's like you know everything's slowing down so maybe that's the maybe there's missing time there like maybe they were actually taken and then dropped after they were done with whatever they needed to do with them like <laughs> well one of the one of the boys i think it was i think it's wayne one of them describes he goes at this point he's like it felt like my brain was being sucked out of my head oh, he described that in the car Right, he Ooh. said. He said that was the feeling that he got like, during this I, moment. I get like so that bad. when I drink a fucking slurpee too fast, too. Though, <laughs> exact same feeling. Yeah. Exact same thing. Um, the other interesting thing is like if this is some sort of like time distortion, we've seen this before, right? In a couple of the other uh, case files, we've talked about where these people like the you know the bullet slowing down, and, or if this is like some sort of affected area where this happens, right? So it's like if someone was watching from the outside, would they see this car? moving at as, like dr- ripping down the road then all of a sudden just kind of like coming to a slow right it's i don't know it's interesting and as the car landed after uh from the, after the sensation of them being pick up, picked up it hit the ground hard enough it hit the road far enough that they said uh the back right tire actually burst and so leading them to well, have it, to like dropped well, it's fully loaded. You got four, you got three full grown adults. You've got two digs. You have two right? digs. Right? And you got a fucking top full of luggage, right? Like the car's fully loaded. So, yeah. I will Any say this too, though. Like that. Well, but not only that, too. Like this, you, we've said that this car is on record doing 200 kilometers an hour here. A lot of these vehicles, tires aren't fucking rated for that type of speed either. No, right? like the, are, yeah, the tire tires would be fucking, fucking compromised, hot. right? Like yeah. these tires are ready to fucking go. Uh, and yeah, they're not meant to duke's a hazard. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, now, after after the tire popping, Sean reports uh, a brief period of him actually blacking out. So either by and after this time, uh, he remembers waking 
and, and running from the car, like pretty much waking up and then everybody exiting out the car. They had pulled over to the side somehow and they decided that the best course of action was to leave the car. And, Run! And then they were going to go hide and... Everyone for themselves! <laughs> and then the entire family was going to go ahead and, and, and take shelter in some nearby bushes to try and evade the, the whatever was seemed to be following the vehicle. Now... Uh, they stayed within these bushes and they and they left the car for about what they said was probably around 15 minutes. Probably, it's probably about 15 or 20 minutes, maybe. And then that's uh, at that time after waiting that long and nothing happening, they 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 went back and returned to the car. And then they changed the tire since the the object that had been harassing them uh, seemed to be gone. Uh, you know, had either lost interest or or had left uh, the area. And they changed their tire and they just went on their way uh you know all sufficiently traumatized of what the what had just happened so the family drove on to the city of seduna it, be, it could be kaduna I, somebody's gonna figure whatever <laughs> somebody's gonna, <laughs> we had to we had to do the italian cities and now we have to do the australian cities i'm sure i hope somebody's gonna uh correct me but they drove 600 well, kilometers will, non-stop uh to to seduna and um they contacted the police uh, from there to actually, you know, right after this happened to report uh, the incident. Now, it, th- th- there's kind of a funny thing is like whether uh, there's some debate. They didn't sleep for that last 600. <laughs> yeah. None of them. Um, there is some debate because there is a town between that, that like halfway between uh, where they encountered the craft and Seduna, apparently like, I guess 300 kilometers, they could have stopped at another town, but they kept going. Um, they kept going and they got to that place. And then they decided to uh, from, I think they stopped at like a roadside motel uh, for, you know, for the morning or whatever, and then decided to give a call to the the police and report what had just happened. So I guess the, the, the officer that was responsible for taking their call was named Sergeant Jim Furno. And he, um, he, you know, noticed right off the bat that the family was noticeably distraught. Um, he kind of compared it that this family seemed almost like they had lost, like uh, their, their emotional state was, was similar to uh, a family that had lost someone close to them. Like they were all just kind of the fucking grandma on the roof (laughs) gone. (laughs) Um, and, uh, when they, when they actually got, um, you know, they had the the family come in and they had them take their reports and, uh, you know, they, the the police were actually there, um, and able to gather forensic evidence, you know, material from the car, which they had reported with that hadn't been there before. Uh, they, they, they did a tape test, which I guess is like, you know, they just took a piece of tape and then they just kind of like slapped it on different portions of the car to like lift up any particular fingerprint stuff yeah yeah <laughs> alien prints and th- the police actually recommended that the family contact the ufo research australia or euphora um who were uh keen to kind of do their own forensic forensic testing in the car you know they had de- people who had dealt with these ufo uh reports in the past and you know had experience more experience with this that you know the police told them like yeah go contact these people that's awesome that is awesome right because i was gonna say like not only to me i'm like that's not a one-off that means there's enough people coming with weird stuff where they're like you should talk to these people yeah this isn't our expertise and like and not only that too it's like this is this just happened how many cases do we hear of where it's like oh the ufo investigators talk to them fucking 65 years later yeah, right. Yeah. Like this is brand new. This is fresh. They're getting the like the first hand story like right away. There's no telephone game. It's like this. Like it's an ideal situation. Yeah, the next and the next 36 hours would be a whirlwind of of events for the Knowles family. But maybe we should take a break before getting into all of this that that happens. Yeah, just <laughs> before we get to the the media circus that follows this case, we gotta take a short break, grab a beer, and we'll be right back. We're back. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're, we're talking about the the whirlwind of media coverage that that followed the Knowles family because this thing got out. It got out pretty quick, like as soon, almost as soon as they leaked it or they, they reported to the police. This somehow got leaked out to the media, and this just threw up an entire um, you know 
it seemed like almost every news network wanted to get in on this because apparently the family was caught because they decided to continue their trip on to Melbourne. Um, but they, uh, to, or actually to Melbourne to meet with the UFO research, uh, Australia people, they were going to, they were actually going to meet with them. And then, you know, so the, Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.